So it's an interesting question why we have fall. Um, fall isn't something that comes from the earth itself alone. Fall comes because of the position that the earth is in relation to the sun. So you have to think back to uh, your science, like seventh grade science, where you learned about the earth orbiting around the sun and the fact that the earth is on a tilted axis. And so as the earth is rotating around the sun, there are some times when the northern hemisphere is pointed, it's like closer to the sun, it's sort of tilted in towards the sun. And that's when we're having summer in the northern hemisphere. We are having a more direct sunlight hitting the earth's surface. So we have longer days and more sunlight, so we have summer. Now, as the earth continues to to orbit around the sun, it, as you move away from summer, you're coming along sort of more parallel to the sun here, and that's when the seasons are changing and you get fall. So we're having a less intense uh, amount of sunlight hitting the earth, and we're on our way towards winter, where the northern hemisphere is pointing away from the sun, and we have shorter days and less sunlight hitting the earth. So that's, that's really where fall comes from. Another interesting question is why do leaves turn color? Like what makes the leaves turn color in the fall? Now leaves, we all know leaves generally as being green and leaves are green because they have this pigment in them called chlorophyll and chlorophyll is green and it's produced by leaves using nutrients and minerals and the sunlight. But the thing with chlorophyll is that it's, it's sort of a temporary pigment. pigment. It, it sort of breaks down when it's exposed to sunlight. So it needs to be constantly renewed in the leaves over the course of the growing season, over the course of the summer. Now, when you get to the late summer, uh, fall is triggered by this change in the day length. So it's really the length of the night that causes the leaves to start changing color. And this happens because as the nights become longer and the days become shorter, that triggers the leaves to grow this little layer of, of tissue called abscission tissue. And it starts to cut the leaf off from the rest of the plant. So it's no longer able to get the water and the nutrients and the minerals from, from the roots. And so as this abscission layer grows, it's, it's cutting off the leaf's supply of nutrients. And then that means that the leaf can no longer continue to produce chlorophyll. So that's, that's what makes them green. So the chlorophyll just, just breaks down. It gets used up basically in the leaf and it breaks down and it fades away. And then you see other colors that come out in the leaf. So these are colors like the yellows and the oranges that were always present in the leaf. They were just masked by the green pigment of the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll breaks down and then the oranges and yellows become visible. And those oranges are called carotenoids. And that's just like, like carrots. It's the same pigment that makes carrots orange. And the yellows have a more complicated name. They're called xanthophils. That's with an X. And, and those, so it's the xanthophils and the carotenoids, the yellows and the oranges that then get displayed in the leaves. But the color that's of most interest to a lot of people is, is the reds, because that's what makes the leaves, you know, look like all those sunset colors, the red, the orange, and the yellow together. Now the red pigments are called anthocyanins, and those come from a reaction as that chlorophyll is breaking down and there's a little bit of extra sugar in the leaf, there's a reaction between those two that creates the anthocyanins in the leaf. So those aren't already present, they're created after the leaf is cut off from the rest of the tree. So that's basically how, how the leaves change color. And, and that color change can vary a lot based on the, the conditions going on in the environment. So there are three main factors that influence the intensity of the color display in any given year. You have the soil moisture, the air temperature, and the amount of sunlight that's reaching the leaves. Now let's talk about sunlight first. So when you have lots of sunny days in the fall, that causes the chlorophyll, which we talked about earlier, that causes the chlorophyll to break down more quickly. So the green pigment breaks down more quickly when there's lots of sunlight 
and then the display of the oranges and the yellows and the formation of the red pigments all happens quite quickly and you get a, a beautiful fall color display. Now when you have warm wet conditions you're going to generally have a more muted color display where you have sort of less intensity in the reds and 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 just sort of a it'll be a maybe a long but less interesting display of color so the best fall color comes when you've had uh, a moist summer but not a so sopping wet summer followed by a fairly dry fall where you have cool nights but non-freezing nights and then warm days that are clear and sunny and that combination allows you to have the abscission layer or that the leaves become cut off from the trees quite quickly because of the cool temperatures and the shorter days and then the bright sunlight causes the chlorophyll to break down quickly and the fall colors to be displayed very um, quickly and brightly. They tend to come out more bright. One of the great things about Shenandoah is that there is a fairly long period of peak colors in the park. We start getting colors as early as August, late August, and moving into September, but they can extend all the way into November. So the peak in the park is typically around the third week in October, but that can vary. It can be early October if we're having a dry year. It can be late October or even early November if we've had uh, a year which where spring was delayed and, and the, the fall season was sort of pushed a little bit later. So fall progresses in Shenandoah over a number of months. It starts even in mid-August to September, and then it ends in November. So when August rolls around, late August, early September, you start seeing the beginnings of fall in little pops of color, little leaf tips of color, mostly in the black gum trees. You see brilliant reddish purple on, the, on a, a leaf on the tip of black gum trees. You see it on the tips of the red maple trees. That, that's usually where you start seeing fall first appear in Shenandoah. But then as we move on into sort of mid-September, and later September, you see more color starting to appear in things like Virginia creeper, which is a vine that you see on the rock walls along Skyline Drive, and you see it climbing up the trees along the road. Uh, and Virginia creeper turns sort of a dark reddish purple color. It's, it's very, very bright and very brilliant. Uh, you see that, you start to see the sassafras turning color, and sassafras trees grow along the edges of Skyline Drive, particularly in the Central District, sassafras and sumac. Those two, two they're sort of small trees, shrubby type species. Um, sassafras and sumac both have a tendency to turn beautiful combinations of sort of bright orange with a little bit of yellow and then a bits of, of red in there, kind of like a sunset. And you'll see all of those colors taking place in, in different leaves on on those shrubs. You also start to see color in the earlier part of the season, early to mid, in dogwood trees. Now dogwoods have this purple color and you see them. They're a small tree and they grow, once again, just scattered out in the forest. You'll see these little bits of purple. Shenandoah has a lot of yellows in the peak season as you get into late September and early October. And the yellows come from our uh, beech trees, we have some beech trees, we have a lot of birch trees, and then hickory trees. So birches and hickories make up a ton of the, the yellow color that we get in the sort of peak season. So fall color lasts so long in Shenandoah because we have such a high diversity of forest tree species. So we have lots of different tree species and they don't all change color at the same time. So some change early, some change in the middle, and then others kind of bring up the rear and change at the end of the, of the season. And because of the elevation change in the park and the fact that the park is you know, 100 miles long, you have this long um, fall season. And it's different than what you might experience, say, up in New England, where the forest is a bit more homogeneous and made up of primarily birches and beeches and maples. And it tends, in New England, to turn all at the same time and so you get a very short, very intense color display. 
in Shenandoah, our color display is, is long and drawn out across several months, peaking in the third week of October in a, in a standard year, in an average year. I always like to make sure people look out for one of my favorite periods in the fall, which is in the, the later part of the season when our yellow poplars or our tulip trees start to change color. And the yellow poplars, they tend to grow along the stream valleys. And if you've ever stood in an overlook in Shenandoah and looked off down into the valley, you can see you know, that, that the park, the sides of the park are marked with streams leading down towards the valley. Now in the fall, you can see those streams particularly clearly because all of the yellow poplars turn this beautiful golden yellow and you see these sort of fingers of gold reaching up into the park. And it tends to take place after many of the other trees at the higher elevations have sort of passed their prime. But don't worry if you get to the park and you're not seeing a lot of color along Skyline Drive. Just go to an overlook and look down on the, on the slopes of the park because you'll, you'll still see color down there, especially these, these tulip poplars. The very end of the fall season in Shenandoah is marked by the oaks turning. So oaks and hickories make up the majority of trees in Shenandoah. And oak trees, they're just a little bit slower to change color. And you'll see them change color. Usually it's, it's not until early November that they change. And, and they have a very brief but very beautiful display of, of different shades of sort of golden brown, chocolate brown, but then you get reds from the red oaks. So it's very beautiful late in the season when our oaks decide to change color. It, they come in at the very end of the season when everything else has passed its prime. <clears throat> and it's usually a very brief peak of one or two days in early to mid-November. And you'll see the sides of the park with all of their oak trees suddenly turn from just dull colors of green and brown. They'll sort of brighten up to, you'll see russets and brighter reds and golden browns as well as chocolate browns. It's really, really beautiful and it's a large scale display, but it's one of those things that you just have to, it takes chance. You just have to hit it by chance. Sometimes people are concerned that they've arrived at the park and they, or they're in the central district and that they've missed peak because all the leaves have passed in the central district. But one important thing to remember when you visit Shenandoah, if you miss peak in one area of the park, you can always drive to the north or to the south and look for peak somewhere else. The high elevations of the central districts tend to pass peak leaf color early in the season, but we still have many weeks of beautiful color in the north district and into the south district if you just drive away from the central district and take a look. There are a number of factors that can change the progression of fall in Shenandoah. Now, one of the most important ones is frost and freezing temperatures. If we get freezing temperatures early on in the fall season, that effectively destroys the color making uh, mechanism in the leaves and the pigments, and that causes us to have a very dull fall. Uh, so you're looking for cool nights, but not freezing nights to get the best color. So freezing temperatures are very detrimental to fall color. The other thing that comes to mind is big storms, big wind storms. You can have beautiful fall color in the leaves, but you remember that fall color is formed by them growing this layer of tissue that helps the leaves separate from the tree. So their attachment to the trees is quite tenuous. So if you get a big wind storm, and there's beautiful color out there, it can just blow all the leaves away in a single night. So that can be disappointing. And then another major factor in determining how fall is gonna look in Shenandoah is whether there are even any leaves on the trees at all. And so what happens sometimes is that we get insect outbreaks or outbreaks of fungus, and that can cause the leaves to become deformed or become full of holes, or in the worst case scenario, be completely eaten off the trees so that there's nothing to even change color. So we, we experience that periodically in Shenandoah, outbreaks of spongy moths or other insect pests or outbreaks of diseases. But one thing to keep in mind, even if you do happen to be in an area of the park that's had some kind of major insect outbreak or, or disease outbreak, Usually those outbreaks are pretty localized, so if you just drive 
five, 10 miles to the north or the south, you're likely to come to an area of the park that wasn't impacted. So you'll still be able to see color there. It doesn't matter what time of year you decide to come to Shenandoah, you'll always find something beautiful. Fall has its own particular points of beauty, but come out to Shenandoah anytime and enjoy the trees, enjoy your time here, and, and have a wonderful day.